Hi, I'm Tom Markland. I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Chemistry at Stanford University, specialising in theoretical chemistry. So what excites me most about theoretical chemistry is that we take ideas not just from chemistry, but also from physics, mathematics and computer science, and combine them with both increasing computer power and modern algorithms to really get into the molecular detail of what's going on. This is getting, this allowing us to do increasingly more advanced simulations and look at even more detail of these sort of systems. So what we're most interested in is how to describe the dynamics of systems where you're forming chemical bonds between the different parts. Particularly, we're interested in how nuclei are actually quantum mechanical objects. So whereas you might have things like football or billiard balls moving around a table where we're used to seeing them move classically, in actual fact, when you get to very small systems, these things behave in like fuzzy particles where you have to take into account the quantum, their quantum mechanical nature. What we're really interested in doing is doing that really efficiently because formally it's limited to very small numbers of particles if you try and do it exactly. So one project we've been working on a lot recently is on isotope fractionation. So hydrogen in the actual environment consists of hydrogen, which we're used to hearing about, and deuterium, which is a much rarer, heavier element. During the natural climate processes, these isotopes separate in the atmosphere. So when you find water in the atmosphere, you can find different concentrations of these. And this is really useful in understanding things like climatology, where you can link this back to historical temperature trends. But what we're really interested in is how can you predict these trends on a computer. So another recent project we've been working on is how enzymes function. Enzymes are used by biological systems to greatly enhance the efficiency of chemical reactions to allow them to function. One more thing we've been particularly interested in is how proton networks and the active site of enzymes operate. In particular, in a recent study, we were able to show that the quantum mechanical nature, this fuzziness I was talking about earlier, is used to delocalize the protons, which leads to the really efficient use of this end, uh, function of this enzyme. In particular, we were able to also show how, therefore, it can withstand mutations and to certain parts of its uh, thing, and therefore continue to function in nature. We've also been interested in how, um, acid, uh, how protons transport through various media. And this is really important when considering energy applications such as fuel cells, which are the basis of clean energy solutions. What we want to do in those systems is be able to work out ways to alter the chemical system such to allow the protons to move efficiently through it. By simulating these things and connecting them to, how, to experiments based on spectroscopy, we can help aid in the design of new systems to efficiently transport protons. So one of the great things about this and these improvements is that they're now allowing us to really, in the condensed phase, be able to predict the results of large numbers of experiments and have a real back and forth with the experimental community on how both to refine the theory and the experiments to make both better. And I'm really thankful for the Dreyfus Foundation support for all our work in these areas.